Hello everybody, um, hope you are enjoying the conference. I don't know if you've seen on the background, but there was the castle um, of Amboise, which is a beautiful castle if you get uh, into France sometimes. Um, so my name is Jean-Louis Montero, and um, uh, today I'm gonna be uh, talking about MicroProfile. I've been involved into a MicroProfile since uh, day one, which is 2016. Uh, I'm now um, quite uh, an heavy contributor of many specifications. And um, and that's the reason why I want to share uh, some of, of the knowledge. Um, I've been previously involved as well in the uh, Java space, um, JCP and a couple of uh, specifications like EJB uh, and some others. Um, and um, I, I also um, work on the open source side of things. So I'm, I'll be uh, today using uh, an implementation, which is uh, uh, an Apache uh, implementation. Um, welcome. And um, and that's it for today. Uh, so we're going to see uh, today uh, uh, a quick introduction to uh, microservices, um, mainly to uh, to give you some uh, some good uh, feedback I got um, over the last couple of uh, months with customers and uh, during the presentations. And then I'll be uh, quickly uh, going into uh, the micro profile, and uh, we'll have a quick tour of the specifications. And hopefully we get some time to. Uh, uh, you know, to work a bit on the uh, Raspberry Pi cluster that I got with me. Uh, the desk is not, you know, made such, such as you can see uh, the, the Raspberry Pis, but uh, we are going to use them uh, just so that uh, you know that, you know, we can run on a small, small devices. All right, microservices, anyone? I believe if you are here, that's because you, uh, you've heard about, about microservices. Um, are you uh, developing microservices? Yeah, most of you? Java? Yeah, okay. So you are in the, the right uh, talk today. Um, and uh, eventually, are you deploying microservices in production or are you just playing? Yeah, a bit. All right. So um, when, I, when I speak at conferences, usually at the end, uh, there are a lot of uh, discussions going on um, and uh, people come to me and ask what is a microservice? You know, how, how big is a microservice? Should it be uh, like, uh, you know, one single class, 5K jar class, whatsoever. So I got in there some of the feedback uh, and some of the discussions I've got with them. You know, some of them think that uh, it can be written in two weeks, uh, probably because it's, you know, it fits the uh, agile methodology. Uh, some other think that it's domain driven design. So, you know, up to you to make your own um, thought on it. Uh, to my view, uh, because I'm a bit older, it's, it's like Zoe. Uh, but uh, we have rest in front of it. And um, I like also to, uh, you know, to see uh, what, what is the trend on the internet. And, um, and I went into uh, Twitter and tried to gather some feedback as well from, from people. I don't know if you've seen this quote from uh, Simon, um, but uh, I actually like it. You know, if you can build a monolith application, um, you know, don't think that adding the network in the middle will make it uh, simpler. So this is one I really like. Uh, this one I won't be commenting it, but uh, you know that's that's what we can see on the real world. And uh, and finally the last one, you know, um, microservices is the uh, ar architect's dream, but uh, usually the developer's nightmare. All right. Uh, anyway, the microservices, um, um, you know, they they bring like um, a, a couple of benefits. And uh, the reason why we are going to microservices, I've seen two, uh, two presentations yesterday. Uh, they were actually uh, very interesting. One in the morning, which, uh, which was about uh, monolith as well on microservices. Uh, very interesting perspective. Um, in my view, uh, the microservices, uh, they help uh, delivering features uh, more quickly. Uh, usually you can get smaller teams that work in parallel to each other. And uh, you, know, you have less to build usually, and it's easier to test, so you can deploy that more quickly. Um, it's also better for uh, scalability. You don't have to take the whole monolith and replicate that into many machines to scale out. Uh, you can only take the, the pieces you need and scale only the, uh, the services you need. So it's really, uh, uh, really good in terms of uh, um, resource, resources in terms of, of scalability. But indeed, the network brings a couple of new challenges uh, into the, the landscape. Uh, the uh, the resilience is one of them uh, because one service might not be uh, 
uh, might not be available. Of course, if you are running a monolith, uh, either the whole thing is down or it's working. But usually when you work on the microservices world, uh, you may have like one service down only and you, you have to, uh, to work around it uh, and, and still deliver your service, even if it's uh, not the full service. The monitoring is another one. Uh, you know, we yesterday again in that in that talk, um, um, he was he was explaining how to to track the the calls with uh, you know the uh, the correlation ID and things like that. When you are in the microservices world, that's even more important because you have a lot of machines involved, a lot of services, and you need to be uh, able to track what the user has been doing. And obviously, the security as well is an important one. So, uh, what is uh, MicroProfile? Uh, MicroProfile has been uh, created in 2016. Uh, at that time, uh, there was no Java E8. Um, um, we still had like Java E7. Um, and uh, and um, many, many actors of the open source and many uh, big companies like IBM, uh, Red Hat and, uh, and Tommy Tribe uh, got together around the table and realized that uh, Java E did not fit the microservices world. It was not time to market. Um, the, uh, the releases of Java E were too slow and they decided to, uh, to get together and create uh, a dedicated platform for microservices. And that's the reason they created MicroProfile, which is an open source platform. So if, if you want to get involved, if you have any opinion and, and if you want to help, um, you know, get in touch with us and, uh, and you are welcome to contribute. Um, it's now a mature platform, a uh, three years old platform. We've got like about 20 uh, releases. Uh, out of the platform uh, and uh, and we have now uh, many many feedback and many many implementations that you can use uh, so it's it's quite quite mature um, we started very very uh, simple only three specifications uh, the reason was uh, like we didn't want it to add anything into the the, um, the profile uh, which um, which would have been painful in the future uh, basically, we don't want to add anything which um, may be a, a restriction in the future. So we started very, um, uh, very simple, and then we started iterating on top of that and adding more um, to the cake. Um, today, we have things to do configuration, fault tolerance, uh, security with J JWT, and everything regarding monitoring, uh, open tracing metrics, etc. And we have all the client side with the REST client and open API. And we are working currently on the streams as well. And, uh, and in terms of uh, big picture, uh, so we've got uh, today MicroProfile 2.2. Uh, the background is basically um, uh, the, the backbone of the, uh, the, the specification with CDI 2.0 now, uh, JSONP and JSON binding, JAXRS. Again, we've got else metrics and open tracing for the monitoring and for tolerance which is inspired from his tricks, but we'll see that a bit later. Of course, configuration and, uh, and a bit of the client. Um, again, um, this, this was um, uh, because Java E uh, did not um, meet the, uh, the requirements for microservices. Um, it was seen as being too heavy. Uh, I would not be uh, running uh, IBM WebSphere on the Raspberry Pis at all. You know, it's a uh, eight, eight gigabyte uh, system, so I will not be deploying that. Uh, so we really wanted something lightweight and, uh, and something we can scale on the cloud. Um, just uh, for your information, for people which are not Java e, uh, fans or which are not uh, AV uh, users, uh, so MicroProfile has been creating between the two. And uh, as you can see, between E7 and E8, we only got two specifications, uh, but it took forever to get that done, like four years. And that's uh, one of the reasons why we created MicroProfile, because in between we've got like maybe uh, five or 10 releases from MicroProfile already. Um, I got all of these already done, so uh, I'll move forward. Uh, one important note, um, you, may, you may be aware that uh, Java E moved to uh, Eclipse Foundation as well and uh, became open source last year. It's now Jakarta E. Um, just to make sure that things are clear, um, MicroProfile won't be merging into Jakarta E. So um, MicroProfile will live alongside with Jakarta E, even if we uh, rely on some of the uh, specifications from Jakarta. Uh, but we won't be uh, merging the two into one. So we'll be using still MicroProfile. 
in terms of uh, the um, the actors of the macro profile, so we've got the, the main uh, big companies like Oracle, Microsoft, IBM, and uh, Fujitsu, Lightband, etc. Uh, the good thing is that we've got uh, the London Java User Group and uh, some Brazilian Java User Group as well. So we've got some communities involved, uh, which is very sane for uh, the uh, the overall platform. In terms of implementations, so uh, we've got Oracle, obviously, Red Hat. So today we'll be uh, using one where um, we are heavy uh, contributors at Tommy Tribe, which is in the Apache side. So let's see uh, how the, uh, the first um, micro profile application looks like. So we're going to be using CDI. Are you uh, aware of CDI? Yeah, it's Spring Lite for Java E. So it's uh, context and dependency injection. Uh, it you know, it allows you to uh, to have uh, beans and and handle their life cycle. You can use producers as well, uh, add interceptors on top of that, so uh, you get trans uh, transactions and security done with with that. Uh, we'll be using of of course JAXRS, which is the this, this specification for RESTful web services in Java, and uh, we'll be using a bit of uh, JSONP in this example. Uh, for creating a, a JSON payload that we're going to return. So if we look at the code, uh, I have a bit of code into the slides and then I'll switch to the uh, ID so that we can play around with the, uh, the specifications and, uh, and use the, uh, the, the cluster that I got with me. So in that, um, in that simple example, we've got uh, a bit of CDI with uh, the bean injection and the application scoped. We've got a bit of Jack Sarice over here as well and JSONP is hidden into the body of the method. So the first thing we can see with macro profile, at least the first version, is that there is nothing really specific to macro profile. Uh, we only got a few subset of specifications from Java E and we created a, a small profile. Uh, but the interesting thing is that uh, when you run that into a macro profile compliant implementation, you get a couple of things for free that we're gonna see a, a bit later, like the metrics, the open tracing, the R check, and, uh, and open API, for instance. Okay, let's try to, uh, to get that um, into a better shape with uh, some configuration and some other specifications. So as a baseline, I'm gonna be using a simple example, which is a bookstore. Uh, the bookstore has like a book API that you can see on the right side. It uses the uh, number API. So basically when you create a book, uh, you need an ISBN and to get the ISBN, we're gonna be calling the number API. And obviously there is uh, the client over here and the router that, which is hidden uh, in, on, on the desk. I'm gonna be running everything again on uh, a set of Raspberry Pi uh, version three. They are like 10 years old Pentium for people which used to use them. So 600 megabytes of memory and they are a bit slow, but they do the job. Um, and they are very uh, useful when you want, when you want to test things like fault tolerance and uh, something like that. And we'll be uh, trying that because you can basically uh, plug and unplug the cables and see how the application reacts. So it's very useful if you wanna test your application. And um, it's running the uh, Hyperiot OS. Um, are you a Ras um, Raspberry fans maybe? Yeah, so it's running a uh, Hyperiot OS, which is um, uh, a Debian-like uh, uh, OS uh, dedicated to Docker. So basically you can uh, flash your SD cards, install Hyperiot OS, and then you can deploy all the Docker images you want. You just need to inherit from the, the, base, uh, the base image. Um, I'll be running my computer. Uh, I'll be using my computer as the uh, Docker uh, registry, so I don't have to, uh, to use internet and deploy that into Docker Hub. And I'll be using Hansible to, uh, to push uh, everything into the pies and do the deployment things. Everything will be available on a GitHub repo that uh, you can take and play with. Um, all the Docker images are built for the Raspberry Pi and for the, for the computer. So you can run all of this into your own computer as well if you wanna play with all that stuff after. Uh, in terms of deployment, so my computer is the, uh, the, the registry and then you know uh, I've got the, uh, the book API, which is the purple box. Uh, the uh, orange boxes are the number API because I want to be able to, um, to to unplug and plug and have many instances. And the red box is basically a, a simulator which is uh, creating books on the fly. 
Okay, let's start with the configuration. All, all applications require configuration, so that's one of the first specifications we worked on. Um, it's been inspired from other open source projects and uh, it allows you to configure your, in your application either using CDI to inject the configuration or using um, uh, a standalone API that you can use to, uh, to grab the configuration you need. Um, you can use default values so uh, by default you can run everything in development and it should work out of the box or you can provide default values so the user doesn't have to configure everything obviously and um, and everything is strongly typed with uh, micro profile configuration and we uh, also support java 8 uh, optional in there so if the configuration is not available the application can decide if if it fails or if it has any uh, any other way to uh, to react in terms of how it works, so again, the at inject, which is CDI, and then you have the uh, config property with the name and the default value if you want. So nothing really uh, fancy or, you know, really difficult in that, so I'll be uh, moving to the next one. Uh, there is also the API, as I mentioned, which allows you to do basically the same, uh, grab the configuration and then get from, from the configuration the, uh, the property you need. Um, the interesting thing about macro profile config is that by default uh, it provides you with uh, a set of uh, sources that you can use. So you can define the macro profile config properties uh, which um, will be used to, uh, to read the properties and then there is the system properties and the environment variables which are very convenient if you use docker for instance. Uh, and there is some kind of um, an index that you can use so you can define if uh, one uh, will be read first or, or after the other one and obviously you can have your own database if you want to you just need to implement the config source and uh, and read the uh, the properties from the database okay let's switch to something more interesting now uh, fault tolerance uh, which is very important again when you use microservices it's heavily inspired from um, netflix uh, the um, uh, Istrix project uh, and failsafe uh, which is another one and uh, it allows you to basically uh, react if a service is not available or if it's not responding into uh, uh, the amount of time you defined so we have like many uh, implementations and uh, many flavors of uh, of the fault tolerance so we'll we'll dig into that in in few moments um, it's also uh, heavily built on cdi again cdi is really the backbone of micro profile so uh, if you don't know CDI, it's going to be hard for you to get into the other specifications. Um, if you already know how uh, dependency injection works, then it's kind of easy to get into the other ones because they are all based on that one. So the first one is the timeout. Uh, timeout is used uh, when there is a service which is, uh, for instance, responding, uh, but which is taking a lot of time. So you can you can define a timeout. So if if, for instance, you have like SLAs to uh, to meet, uh, if you are if you are running in payment or things like that, usually you have to uh, to answer into a, a small amount of time, and you don't want to be depending on another service for that. So we use timeout for that. So if the, the invocation takes too long, we're gonna be uh, cutting the connection and uh, and doing another another thing on the service. Retry, which is very useful if you have some uh, network glitch. Um, for instance, if the network is sometimes available, sometimes not, uh, you can define a retry which is able to react on uh, on some exceptions and do another call uh, to make sure that you get your your information. Fallback, uh, fallback is another one. So if at some point you cannot invoke a service, I'll be using that right after, um, and uh, and you don't want to be failing, you still want to be uh, answering something to your customer, then you can define a fallback and have your own business logic to uh, to work around the, uh, the invocation that didn't work. Secret Breaker, um, this one is very interesting as well. Um, it's kind of, um, it allows you to basically um, remove somehow a service if uh, for too long it's been unavailable. And, uh, and put that again into uh, the landscape if uh, it becomes available again. Um, the secret breaker can be uh, uh, open, half open and closed. Uh, so closed, uh, everything is working, open is that, you know, the service is not available anymore. Bulkhead, um, it's also a very interesting one. 
Uh, this one is kind of rate limiting kind of thing where basically we we'll have a service and uh, you know that it won't scale if uh, you receive a lot of requests. Uh, you can add the bulkhead annotation in there and define how many concurrent requests you want on your service. And if you do that, then uh, you can define if uh, the next invocations are going to fail or if you want to queue them so that when the uh, uh, a new thread is available, it can pick that up and run the, uh, the business logic. Micro profiler check. Um, this is heavily used by load balancers, so F5, for instance, etc. When they want to, you know, pull the service out of the load balancer because it's not responding anymore, uh, usually you need to implement uh, an health check uh, to make sure that your system is healthy and is currently uh, responding. Um, so that's again very important. I'll have a, a small demo right after. Uh, when you use health check on micro profile, you get out of the box uh, the slash health. Uh, endpoint and this endpoint allows you to uh, to get the state of your of your system so basically it runs all the health check and gives you the overall result uh, and uh, it can be used as JSON uh, or as plain text as well so it supports many uh, many content types uh, the overall status depends on the status of all the checks that you have implemented obviously if there is at least one which is down the whole health check is going to be reporting down as well. So uh, the load balancer again can, can do stuff behind it, behind the cover. All right, let's see how it works. Uh, very easy. Uh, it's uh, for those who used um, uh, metrics, which is an open source framework. Uh, it's really similar in terms of implementation. So you have to implement an health check interface. Uh, don't forget to add the health uh, annotation in there and then you know you can do whatever logic you want into the body you just need to uh, to return uh, an health check response when you hit the uh, the health uh, endpoint uh, you're gonna get uh, the list of all the checks that you are going to run and of and the overall outcome which again depends on the outcome of each check all right, let's see how it works. How much time do I have? Remaining? Okay, thank you. <coughs> so I have implemented a small uh, L check over here, which basically um, um, is a check audience isn't sleeping. So that's because we are after lunch and I wanted to make sure that you are not sleeping. So I created this one and I'll be running this one locally so that it's faster. Well, I'll be deploying on the pies and at the same time I'll be running locally. All right. Okay. I'll make this a bit bigger as well. Okay, so that's the uh, the health check. Obviously, it's random. So sometimes you are sleeping, sometimes you are not. Uh, and in terms of uh, the Raspberry Pi, it's currently deploying the uh, the wood sync. So I'll be switching back to this, and I'll go. I'm I'm going further with the presentation. Metrics. Um, metrics is basically when you want to monitor the um, uh, the time spent into methods uh, and uh, and get some statistics about execution. Uh, so um, if you have some SLA to meet into your project, uh, you can have some statistics and see if most of the time uh, you are good. Uh, it gives you back a couple of endpoints as well, which are all REST compliant. Um, and they are required per spec. Uh, so the base one is basically a, a set of uh, system metrics which are required uh, to be implemented by the micro profile implementations. Um, the application one is basically everything that uh, you are measuring on your application. Everything is going to appear in this one. And vendor specific metrics, well, IBM, you know, uh, Oracle or any other um, server. Uh, implementing macro profile are going to add things to uh, to this area 
uh, as well. So we just want to, the things to be all uh, you know classified into uh, something you can understand. And there is the option uh, you can use on all those uh, endpoints so that you can um, get uh, some kind of uh, meta information uh, of the uh, of the metrics uh, like this one. So if you run options on the base, uh, then you end up by having uh, all the checks, all the metrics with uh, a small description and the unit and all, you know, all useful information so that you can discover and build up a UI if you want to. In terms of payload, this is the one, for instance, you get when you hit the, uh, the base endpoint. Uh, you get, for instance, the, uh, some information about the thread and uh, the memory. Uh, in terms of metrics, uh, there are many annotations you can use. Uh, counted so that you get the, the number of invocations. Uh, method and time, which uh, allows you to get some statistics about the invocation. Uh, the gauge to build up some uh, timelines uh, about the execution as well. And this program, which is a bit more complex uh, and which is not an, an annotation. In terms of how do you use them, uh, very easy as well. Uh, you just add an annotation, you add a name in there and the unit and uh, everything is done under the cover, you don't have to implement anything else. Uh, you're going to get statistics about everything you want to measure. Um, in terms of uh, the meters, uh, this is what you get basically uh, when you are measuring some, uh, some of your endpoints. Uh, the timer gives you more information because you have, for instance, the percentage, which are very, very important. Again, if you have SLAs to meet, uh, because you know that you have to answer 99% of the time under the uh, one second or whatever. Uh, so the, the timer thing is very important as well. The counter, which is, you know, a counter very easy. I won't be uh, really commenting this one. Uh, the gauge is more a timing one. So the gauge uh, allows you again to build up uh, some histogram and, 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 and lines if you are using things like Elasticsearch, etc. Um, a metrics is by default uh, compliant with uh, Prometheus. So if that's something you are, you are used to, uh, then you can uh, plug that in into Prometheus and the payload is going to be compliant out of the box. Um, everything is available into the demo. So again, if I don't have time to uh, demo that, uh, you can go and fork the GitHub repo and uh, there is a Docker Compose file. You can run everything locally and, and use Prometheus, uh, Zipkin and all that stuff. Uh, histogram, I'm going to pass around it. I'll, I'll spend a bit more time on the open tracing. Open tracing is uh, basically a binding uh, on top of the uh, open tracing implementation. I don't know if you know this one. Yeah, a few of you. It's a very awesome implementation. It's now uh, an Apache uh, uh, thing with Deepkin. Um, it allows you to um, to track the calls of uh, your um, your system, so that you can see uh, all the services you reached and how many time you spent into each service or each piece of service. Uh, there is as well a couple of annotations you can use, and. Um, and you can use also the programmatic approach. Also, let's see. Here we go. So uh, this is the annotation you can use to um, to track uh, your calls with uh, CDI and open tracing. And this is the um, uh, programmatic way to handle spans. If you want to just measure a subset of the body, uh, you have two options basically. Either you are uh, lazy and you use your IDE to extract the logic into a method, and then you just need to add the uh, at um, at annotation. Uh, if you are not lazy and you want to deal with all the span stuff, uh, you can have that uh, into your body, uh, but it's a bit cumbersome in my opinion. But that works. In terms of Deepkin demo, uh, all right. So on this um, uh, compost file, I'm building up uh, my SQL database, uh, Zipkin, so that uh, we can have a storage and have all the, uh, the, the information about the invocations. Uh, I've got one instance of the book API deployed, one instance of the, uh, the number API deployed as well. 
And uh, now, now we can play around with uh, a small REST client over here, which is a small main that I'm going to run to create some books. Is it big enough? Yeah. OK, let's see. Come on, buddy. Maybe some cash. Yep. Anyway, so yeah, it's big enough. So I run uh, one one client. I'm gonna be running another one. So at least you can see that it was not hard coded. Uh, maybe a third one. So if I now go to uh, the Zipkin UI uh, and I want to see what happened, make this a bit bigger. We can see that um, we went into the book create endpoint, and then uh, we switched to another service which is meant to compute the ISBN number. And as you can see, you get basically all the timeline on the uh, on the axis, and then uh, you get all the measurements uh, over here with all the timings. Uh, you m might want to add uh, additional data. So with open tracing, you can add some metadata to your um, measurements. So when you click on it, uh, you, you can get them on, on the details over here. So this one is very important. If you use distributed systems, I would recommend you to invest a bit of time into open tracing. That's a very good specification. JWT, um, it may mainly comes from um, uh, big actors like um, uh, Facebook, uh, Google, and uh, and uh, and so on. Uh, they were used to uh, to rely on JWT for all two implementations, for instance. Um, I just summarized over here the challenges usually when you uh, when you need to add security on your systems. There are basically three things you need to do. Uh, the first one is identify who is the caller. Uh, make sure that is the one he pretends to be, uh, what he can do on my system, and uh, then when you run into a distributed system, you have to propagate the security context into, uh, um, you know, to the other services you want to invoke. Uh, obviously, when you run into a monolith application, you store that into a thread, and then, you know, you share that out of the box. Uh, when you run into a, a distributed system, it's a bit harder. Okay. Um, I've done that already. Uh, so JWT propagation, it's it's a weird name, um, but basically it's the security spec that allows you to uh, to have JWT wired up into your application and have uh, security enforced in there. So it, it, it basically allows all the role-based access control. It supports all the uh, the keys format in JSON and, uh, and it's um, uh, also uh, supporting macro profile configuration for the keys and, and uh, the issuers, etc. The goal again over here is under the cover, uh, extract the token for you from the headers, uh, verify that the token is valid. Usually we use a signed token, so you know the user cannot change the token and add additional permissions. Uh, so we're gonna check the signature of the token uh, and then build up the principles into the system so that we can do uh, all sorts of checks and, uh, and especially enforcing the, the authorizations. Uh, JOT, I won't be uh, going into details for that. Um, I don't know why it's called JOT, but basically it's a JSON payload uh, where you have uh, things named claims inside, which are key value pairs. And then uh, uh, you can enforce the permissions based on the claims. Um, it, the specification allows you as well to uh, extract the claims out of the box so you don't have to pass yourself the header to pass the JSON, uh, verify the signature and all that stuff. You can just, uh, you know, uh, ask to get uh, that claim uh, injected. And again, uh, you, may, you may be using the roles of load annotation so that you can enforce the permissions. The open API, obviously, if you are building um, um, APIs, uh, that's because you want someone to consume them. Uh, and if you want someone to consume them, uh, instead of 
having a Word document that you're gonna have to maintain alongside with uh, your code. Uh, I would recommend you to uh, look at OpenAPI, which is a set basically of annotations um, that allows you to, uh, to document your, uh, your REST endpoints and therefore uh, you can build after that uh, uh, the, the Swagger UI with uh, a nice look and feel uh, UI where you can navigate through all your uh, endpoints um, and, uh, and get the documentation out of the box. So again, you don't have to maintain all that stuff. There is one single uh, trick. Um, the annotation should be similar. Uh, micro profile is not using the Swagger annotations. Uh, so they are similar, they have the same name, but they are not using the same package. Uh, so be careful when you use the annotations to be using the, the good ones. Uh, in terms of documentation, here is how it works. So you've got the operation and then you can document the response as well. I won't be going into the, the, the demo of OpenAPI. And obviously the last part missing and then I'm done. Uh, that's the REST client. It, it basically um, allows you to, um, to implement a client uh, from one service which is calling another service. Uh, you can implement that as if it was a local service. So basically you've got a strongly type uh, interface and under the cover micro profile is going to build up a proxy uh, which you which will be uh, used to call the uh, the remote service so basically you you are going to call the um, the remote service as if it was local uh, service so very very useful as well so you have two things to do one define the interface of the service with this annotation and uh, on the client side of things you just need to get uh, the interface injected and then you are done you can use the uh, uh, the thing uh, the way you want. If you are not familiar with MicroProfile, there is start.microprofile.io. You can get there, select the MicroProfile version, the server you want to use, the specifications you want to use, and then you know click on generate. It's going to generate a project out of the box, which is you know running on the server you picked up with the specifications you want, and you can run all of that locally on your on your computer. So if if you don't know where to start, it's a good way to uh, to start. And I'm done. There you go.